Welcome to The Artist Matters. I'm Alex Rudy, and each week you will meet incredible artists from all walks of life. Filmmakers, writers, actors, painters, musicians, and so many more sharing their stories to motivate and inspire the creative in you. Whether you're doing it for fun or looking to make a living, this show will help you on your journey to bring out the artist within and letting the world know that your art matters. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Artist Matters. I'm your host, Alex Rudy. And today on the show, we have a double threat, a musician and a photographer in the form of Barbie Bowser. We met a few years back when she joined our church and became a member of the worship and praise team, singing with her guitar. But her journey goes way back to when she was in Georgia. She started off there and at a very young age picked up the piano as her first instrument, then moved on to the clarinet. Then life got in the way. She got married. And for 20 years, she put away her music. But once she got divorced, she found comfort in a new instrument, the guitar and learned how to play it and sing at the same time. Then she found new love in her husband, Chuck, and he got her interested in photography because he was a photographer himself. And she got bitten by the photography bug and decided to go back to college, get a bachelor's degree, and pursue photography full-time. And she did get work shooting uh, virtual tours of hotels and other establishments. Where do you hear that? Pretty wild job, and she does have her own website dedicated to her photography. In this interview, she'll break down some of the common misconceptions people have about photography. Very eye-opening. And you'll enjoy this. She's someone who's open to trying something unknown and channeling her creativity and passion into it, which is why I knew she'd be a great guest for this show. So, without further ado... Let's get into it right now with my guest today, Barbie Bowser. All right, we have Barbie Bowser on the show. Welcome. Hi, thank you. (laughs) Ah, my first in-house guest. (laughs) So great to have you on the show, officially. All right, let's begin at the beginning. Where were you born? I was born in a very small town in Thomaston, called Thomaston, Georgia. Grew up there for my first 20 years. So, Did uh, where you grew up have any influence on where your creativity came from? Um, The town I grew up in, they don't have a lot of culture. Mm. It's, It's a small southern town. They do, you know, they have crafts and craft fairs and things like that. But... Um, they did have a pretty good marching band. So when I was younger, I was very interested in music. Um, part of that was probably my mom. She didn't really play, but she sang pretty well. And, um, my dad did too. He was in the church choir, you know, grew up in church and I guess was introduced to music through there. Um, About what age? Well, uh, at age six, I started playing the piano. Uh, My mom got me lessons because I wanted them. Mm -hmm. And um, I enjoyed that. I learned to read music fairly early. And um, when I was in fourth grade, I started to play the clarinet in uh, band at school so I learned to play that and that's what I played primarily through like middle school and high school um, was the clarinet I played I still played piano but not it was for my own personal enjoyment not you know doing anything with it but um, when I was in middle school I joined the band the um, their middle school band that they had and ended up being first chair clarinet there and Coming from a small town, well, let me let me put 
put some perspective here. My graduating class had like around 120 people. Okay. <laughs> so coming from a small town, they brought the middle schoolers, some of them, up to the high school band when they were in middle school. We would go over for our last period, and then we'd stay there for band practice. And I think when I was in seventh grade, I I got to go a year earlier than some people. So I went on, um, you know, and became part of the marching band and everything and ended up being first chair there and really enjoyed it. Um, it was, it was, it was a very, it was a outlet. Music always has always spoken to me. It calms me. It excites me. I mean, it's, there's just something very raw and emotional for me Mm. with music and, um, it doesn't always have to have words. It's it's just you know the the instrument being played or, you know, w- one of my favorite sounds is the um, like Indian flutes, mm. and that just it, it just puts me in a serene place. You know to hear that. You know I was part of the marching band. <laughs> Didn't really sing <laughs> at that time. I, I actually I did in high school. I joined the. Um, I was on a girls' trio one time, but I was more on an academic track So in school, so band was my only elective, mm. so I, di- I didn't get to participate in art class and, and all the different ones because music was what I chose to do. What is it about the clarinet that drew you to that instrument? I guess it was the sound it made it it just it had a very peaceful sound um i preferred it over like a horn mm. so i i learned to um play the clarinet i also in high school switched over and actually joined the jazz band one one quarter i think i think it was just one quarter and learned the saxophone um so i played saxophone in that for like one quarter, but it's the same type of instrument. It's just a different fingering, so it wasn't hard to switch over. Wow. Um, and then my last year in high school, I got tired of the clarinet, and since I played piano, it was an easy switch to play the bells. So I became part of the drum the drum corps, so I carried this big thing of <laughs> of bells, or it's like a xylophone kind of oh, thing. Okay, but it's um, wooden. It's called we called it the bells, hmm. and I played that on the as part of the drum line well, and marched with it. <laughs> you're in high school. You're doing all these instruments. After you graduate, do you continue music anywhere? I school? I did. I went on to college um, for about two and a half years before I got married. And I didn't really play an instrument there, um, but I joined, we had a Baptist student union that I was part of, and I tried out for their worship team. Mm -hmm. And that's when I really started singing. I had had sang a little bit um, in high school, like at church and different things, but being part of an actual team like that I'd never done and we we would go to different churches and and sing and do different events and things um I was in that for 2 years and um being a part of that I kind of got drafted to into a madrigal dinner one time which was kind of cool I was a singing witch oh. <laughs> so a singing witch a singing witch but that was fun it was like a dinner theater kind of thing Nothing wrong with that. So, <laughs> you uh, were singing and did the dinner theater, but really nothing much else with music? Life, no. Life got in the way? <laughs> yes, life life happened, and uh, I ended up getting married my to my first husband. He was in the military, and we moved around a little bit and had my son, and... Um, other than singing at church, you know, in the choir or, or occasionally singing like in a, in a group, a trio or something, you know, for a special, 
um, that's really all I did uh, for music for a while until I got divorced. And um, after my divorce, I was in my 40s. Um, I think I had just turned 40, maybe. And I'd always wanted to learn to play the guitar. So I went and bought a really cheap guitar and taught myself uh, the best that I could do, and which wasn't much. <laughs> I taught myself some basic chords, but I couldn't get the rhythm part down. Mm. So I ended up, um, the church I was attending, the youth, there was a youth worship pastor there who was a youth. He was 17, 18, and he taught me. I took lessons from him, paid him, and he taught me to play the guitar for about, I, th- I think I took lessons for about six months and um, got to where I could pretty much learn the rest on my own mm. and just started practicing. And I um, joined a new church, um, Hope Weaver, over in Plant City. But I joined their worship team and actually became one of the main people on their worship team singing. Um, I was still learning the guitar, so I would bring my guitar to practice and practice and, and things and play every once in a while, but I wasn't good enough to play on a Sunday morning. <laughs> and the one of the main worship leaders left there, and he played guitar. And I was the only other guitar yeah. player. So I kind of got thrown into playing guitar. <laughs> mm-hmm. Divine intervention, maybe? Yes. <laughs> but if if I had not been thrown into that position, I would have never honed my skill on my own, I don't believe. So it, it was God saying, here, mm-hmm. I'm giving you this. You need to, you know, go yeah. do something with it. <laughs> maybe push, you're being pushed out of your comfort zone. I was That's, way out of my comfort zone. But that makes you... All right, you got to step up or yes. shut up, yes, right? Yes, yes. So I started playing, and at first I, I could only play or sing, but then I got to where I could play and sing. And um, during that time, shortly after I started playing there and ended up being you know, the main musician, um, there, were, there, was a, there was a drummer and, and a um, keyboardist, but... Anyone who knows music, the the drummer is the rhythm, and the guitar kind of leads it with the rhythm and stuff. Um, you can lead on piano too, but it's sometimes easier to hear on the guitar, at least for me. Um, so I started kind of leading the music side. We had a worship leader, um, Kimberly, but the music side of it, you know. I was picking out music or helping to pick out music and and um, all of that while I was there in Plant City. You think when you got into the guitar, did that help you during the divorce, the divorce period? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It gave me an outlet. Um, like I said, music has always spoken to me. It's always mm-hmm. calmed me. And having that outlet of learning something new and push even pushing me out of my comfort zone um it it gave me i guess a sense of worth at the time um cuz divorce is hard <laughs> uh it's hard for everyone involved and it it did the the music helped to get me through that very difficult time because it was it was an emotional outlet for me um that along with the fact that i was playing for church so my faith you know came into play there too um definitely definitely was was a good thing and shortly after that i met my husband my current husband uh chuck so he um Matt.